Hi, this is Trent with MetaGeek, and I wanted to go over some of the features in RF3D Wi-Fi Planner, the professional edition. The really cool thing about RF3D Planner is it's one of the few virtual Wi-Fi planners that actually calculates in 3D space. So you can specify a bookshelf height or the floor height, or you can actually put a floor in between the buildings that will show the losses associated with every single access point that you build in. And, you know, adding a wall to a floor plan is really easily done. You can insert any type of wall that you want and they you know they're all associated with colors but if I wanted to say let's build a concrete block with steel between the developers and the marketers in our office okay that sounds like a great idea let's add a wall well as you notice this wall is going to cause a loss with the the R the RSSI of this access point and as we as we hover over it we can actually see what those results are so you know on this side of the wall we have 55 db um, I'm looking at signal noise I can easily switch it to um, our our RSSI or power so we're looking at negative 34 negative 33 next to the AP and on the other side of the wall we immediately have a negative 53 dBm reading another thing I really like about our 3d Wi-Fi planner is you can immediately go through several of the different visuals depending on what kind of graph you want if you want to look at the signal noise ratio you can you can view that hovering over each of the readings will give you a quick read of what the C the SNR is you can also see the data rate expected and right now we're looking at 144 megabits this is because I have actually disabled the uh, channel bonding and let me show you one of the cool features so we can actually go through each AP and configure it and I would like to say let's bring back the bonded channels and we'll place this one on channel 1 and 5 and Okay, now that I've placed the the bonded access point, we can actually see that on the other side of the wall, we, we do not have the great 300 megabits connections, except for maybe in a few spaces, and that's because of the loss generated by this wall that I let, and that I implemented to separate the developers from the marketers. It's a, you know, it's a classic thing, but it's it's easy to delete that wall and see what it would look like once that wall is gone. There, we have higher coverage area of 300 megabits per second data rates and we can we can do that with a few of the other channels as well now keep in mind I'm doing this in the 2.4 gigahertz range so when you have bonded channels in the 2.4 gigahertz there is going to cause some overlap and I'm going to show you what the interference looks like in just a second so I've put the access point 1 on channel channel 7 and 11 and I'm going to put access point 2 and access point 3 on bonded channels and I'm going to put them on 1 through 5. And things look really good here. We have great coverage, you know, in most of the office and I haven't really built the office uh, next to us it's this this small corner office so I don't really mind about that I just want to make sure that everything in my office is is covered in blue with th nice 300 megabit speeds but keep in mind in the 2.4 gigahertz this is what everyone's talking about you have congestion issues and you, you don't have the room for two Wi-Fi bonded channels so there is going to be channel overlap causing interference and RF3D will attempt to show you where the interference is going to occur and if you look, we have interference occurring at negative 62 dBm, even as high as negative 59 dBm, because we have an access point down here and an access point here. It doesn't do a great job of saying, you know, exactly what frequency range or what channel is that the interference is going to occur on, but it's still a nice visual to show how that happens. And I'm going to go ahead and go back in, and I'm going to change some of these back. I'm going to take off the bottom channels, and I'm going to put them on channels 1, 6, and 11 again. Now you notice I have I have essentially said set my, all of my APs to 20 megahertz wide 802.11n and I've dramatically decreased the amount of interference that will occur in the 2.4 gigahertz range. So that's a very cool feature of RF3D Planner that I really 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 like. We can also look at the logarithmic power reliability. These all of these are very cool features that are in the Wi-Fi planner. We can also get into multiple levels and describe the type of office. Is this free space? Is it factory warehouse? Is it an office? So I'm going to set it to office, see if this changes the type of uh, 
propagation levels that we would expect from a Wi-Fi deployment. You also have reporting options and uh, we'll go ahead and click yes save this project and with the report you can select all of the you know charts that we were looking at earlier and we can go to output and we can define um, whether we want a PDF file or an RTF file and you just click start report it'll export it in a very readable format and I think it looks great RF3D planner is $9.99 at metageek.net it functions as a nice addition to your already existing site survey what you're going to do is you're going to essentially build a floor plan and you know use it as a way of quoting to a customer and then you will use your site survey program to verify the results once you have actually implemented so you can actually build this hand it to a customer say this is what I expect it to look like then you can go in with an API on a stick or a site survey and verify the results and as far as planning with a, a Wi-Fi tool I really think that RF3D has got it right there are some quirky things about it but once you get over those it's a great tool it's quick it's fast and it's pretty easy to use with all of the complexities that you would want. Go to metageek.net and check it out.